a fair point. I get super excited and, and interrupt people in things like this. And, and I'm very, I have a lot of conviction. I'm loud, I'm aggressive. And I understand why people would say what he just said, but the reality is I stay listening. You know, the reason I have the insights is I basically listen all the time. I'm spending 90% of my time paying attention. The reason I jump into conversations is I value people's time. We don't have a lot of time right now. I've got to do a business call in a little while. So if I already know where you're going with the point, I'm gonna jump in and get to the punchline. That's my mm. intuition, I understand that. But I know it comes across as, you know, like, like uh, an interesting flow, interrupting, not listening. But I would, I would argue that all of this is about listening. The reason I think a lot of things work well, and to answer your question, I think sometimes people hear me say something, but they're not listening. You know, mm. it's different than hearing you and listening. Meaning, you know, I talk all about patience and happy, you know, people are like, Gary Vee, you know, I, I just read, I, I read all the time. They're like, Gary Vee, you're about that money. I'm like. I, almost every word out of my mouth is happiness over money. Like, you know, people are like, you know, you know, like people, people hear me, but they, they, I want people to be patient yet, you know, everybody wants something right now. Like they, they do something I tell them exactly. to do. And I talk about, I tell stories about being 13 years in doing something before it popped. And meanwhile, you know, they do it for 13 minutes and they're like, Gary Vee, why don't, why am I not verified? Why don't I have a million dollars worth of brand deals? Mm -hmm. You mentioned um, the recruitment process. I, I really, that was one of the things I wanted to pursue in this conversation because it relates to a lot of people who are trying to be successful. So take us through the recruitment process, not just of an athlete in Vader Sports, but in Vader Media, the types of qualities you're looking for in any potential any, any potentially Got anybody it. you're going to sign it. and want to bring on board. By the way, even why we're, we have a friendship. I value kindness over everything. There's a lot of people that I meet Jordan every, you know, all the time. You know, why have I stuck to this and why do I want to do this tonight? It's because I want to co-sign you. I want, I want, you know, the numbers on these, you know, like, you know, I've been asked, you know, especially after all the incredible stuff that Timbo and, uh, and Swiss are doing with Late Night, like the entire culture of like live streams has exploded you know, when you're somebody who has 7.9 million followers and has a big voice in here, like people are gonna constantly, you know, ask you to do lives. I get asked for 40 fucking lives a day. I've said like, yes to like three, you know? So what just as people know, I asked you to, earlier today off a conversation from last week, but today you were like, yeah, let's do it. I mean, so I want people to know but, that. But like this, you is made my, the this is my answer. Why did I say yes? It's because you're a kind kid. You work hard and you're a nice person. Like, right. so that's your answer to my question, bro. The people I hire, the people that are in my inner circle. One of the things I'm always humbled by is when people get to know D-Rock or Tyler or Lou, Alex Raffington, you know, May. Like my inner circle, they're always like, man, these people are so nice. They are. And I'm like, they are. I'm like it's, it's the number one requirement. I'm so talented. This is not a funny, this is such a douchey thing to say, but this is the truth. I'm talented enough that I don't need to hire people that are more talented than me. I need people who I like and who like feed my soul and I like kindness. And of course I, there's, I need complimentary skills. There's plenty of things I'm not talented at, but like, I know my game, I know what I'm doing. And so for me, you know, what do I look for? Kindness. I mean, I, I, you know, I think AJ and I are building a very unique football firm. Like nobody wanted Kyle Allen, Jordan. Yeah, it's it's true. When, when, Kyle, when, Kyle when, Allen was a yeah. you know Michael. Nobody wanted Michael Badgley. Like I would argue, when it comes to kicking and quarterbacks, you can sit right now at the NFL two years later and ask yourself, you know, who's in interesting spots? Badgley's one great season away from being in the NFL for 15 years, and Kyle Allen's gonna have a real legit chance to be one of the 32 starters in the NFL. These are undrafted players. Yeah. So like you know, there's there's a kid that went first round this year that I didn't follow up with. I just don't think he's a nice kid. Like, and I'm in a business where people look the other way because they care about money over legacy and happiness. Okay, so when you're recruiting a kid, what's the balance between he's really talented, he could have a great career, and he's, a, he's okay. He's not a bad guy. He's not great. How do you blend that together? I think okay matters. Like, for example, weed, I don't give a fuck. Like, so that's not, to me, it's good or bad. So, like, if there's no okay. Like, I don't go by other people's public persona. Like, punching a female, not interested. I just, by the way, you don't know this, like, just not for me. Like, and by the way, I don't, this is what's fun about living a life where you don't judge other people. 
I don't judge other people. I really don't. Like, like I'm just gonna make my decisions. That's not right for me. Like, like stealing from your like teammate, not interested. Mm-hmm. Getting into multiple fights, not interested. Lazy's one. That's where we've been really interesting. Like, there's some kids that we definitely like. We like them as a human, but I, but yeah. we think they're a hair lazy. That's mm-hmm. the one where I'll make a concession. Where I'm like, can I fucking, can I drill into their head? Like, stop being a lazy dick. Like, like you know, like people really love to like. Some kids are Jordan. I'll tell you this for all the people watching. I, you know what the number one thing that stunned me about about sports now that I'm deeper, I was super into it. I always had friends that were athletes, but now really being into it, I didn't realize how many people don't love their sport. Wait, you mean specifically the athlete doesn't love what they're doing? Yeah. Yeah, no, you know what, that's absolutely true. Isn't that crazy? It's, like, because all of is, us yeah. dream to be a football or basketball or baseball player, uh-huh. hockey player, whatever. Like, I have been taking aback how little some of these kids like it. It's just their way to the most finances. And I respect that. There's no different than somebody being a doctor or a lawyer or whatever. Like, but I, that completely took me aback. And that's my, if you ask me, the number one thing I start with is, does this kid love football? Because if he doesn't, there's, I believe, and this is super unscientific, this is one man's point of view, I am stunned yeah. how many of those kids don't make it to a second contract. So the average career in the NFL and NBA is only three years. And when you think about that number, three years, that means by the time you're 23, 22, 24 years old, you're retired from your sport. And you don't really have a lot of money, especially in, in the NFL where it's not guaranteed. So what would be your message then well, that's, to these kids? That's the, biggest, yeah. that's the biggest reason I get disappointed when kids don't go with us. There's a kid I loved at the University of Texas three years ago as a human. And when I sign these kids, I sign them for fucking life. You know, like, I'm like, like, I worry about- It's a, it's a whole deal. It's right? a whole deal. Like, I worry about Darnie yeah. Holmes in perpetuity. You know, like, like, you know, forever. And so, like, what, what I'm fascinated by is why people don't sign with us you know every time because what we're offering is like real life and Mm -hmm. and a lot of people jonathan i'm 44 and what i what i like they watch all the other agents like throw them out like garbage after they don't and meanwhile like i invested fifty thousand dollars into walter powell's politico app training you know like like no training yes like with kyle allen we spent a ton of money like he was fucking Kyle Allen trained with Sam Darnold and Josh Allen. I know. With I know, Jordan Palmer. We treated him like when a... He, go ahead, when he told me that, I was I was like, I wasn't blown away because I know it's you guys, but that's not a normal deal. Normal deal? Not, usually if a quarterback's not. not getting drafted, his father is usually paying for the training. There's no agents paying for training, let alone the fucking guy. Jordan Palmer's training Joe Burrow this year. You know what I mean? Like, we... Yeah, we... This is why I think we're gonna build the biggest firm in the world. It's gonna take us a decade because we're not gonna use our money to like use a bag to get four first rounders. Like we can spend the same money in every draft by giving such big marketing advances and taking care of everybody and having four first rounders that were buyable or we could take that same money and actually invest in, you know, Steven Montez and Cole McDonald. Like they're with Jordan too. Like we're- Colorado, Hawaii. That's right, Cole goes seventh round. Steven goes UDFA to Washington, ironically, with Kyle. You know, we are building something real. The, me and AJ decided four years ago, if we're gonna break the system, the way we did with VaynerMedia, we have to break it in a way that nobody can see coming. And what that is, is about humanity and kindness over delivering on economics. Josh Jackson, two years ago, goes second round. Denzel Ward goes first round. Josh has made more marketing money, more business opportunities more care, more care, like, and we're just gonna win on that. And it will take time because the way everyone picks agents by fear, who'd you rep last year? Who'd you rep last year? Yeah. And so, it, you, know, th- you know, and we get competed against, right? Like people, like one kid decided to go in a different direction this year and he called me, he's like, bro, I love you, but like, you know, this guy, famous guy, he's like, he just told me like, you think Gary Vee's gonna give a fuck about you? And he's like, you know, you are busy, you know? And I was like, you know, like, it was just an interesting conversation uh, and, it's been a fun journey. It's been a really fun journey of figuring it out. Have you had, have you gotten to the point yet as a, as an agency with, with athletes where 
you mentioned it, it'll take a decade. Can you can you see the finish line and say, or not even the finish line, but can you see the ultimate success level and say and compare it to anybody else and say we want to be like that? Or are you breaking the mold really to be your own entity like Vayner Media? Is the sports division gonna gonna mirror that? Yeah, I think it's gonna mirror that. I don't want to be CAA or Athletes First or okay, that's what, yeah. or Clutch, and I have a lot of respect for all those people. I want to build my own thing. I want our family to be very unique around humanity long term like i want to i want people to sign with us in 22 years because they know that we took care of a player even though we played for one year and we took care of them mm. yeah i i think what's real the, the main point that you make over and over again that you just made now and you can say it in different ways but it comes across to me as the same point which is kindness humility, work ethic, those three pillars, if you can stay within that and have some balance, some work-life balance, you're going to have success regardless of what you do, assuming that what you're doing, to your point, is something you truly love. And, and, and to your point, success in happiness, not maybe finances. Like you may, you may love basketball coaching and you're never meant to be Pat Riley. You're just going to be a division three coach and you may just make 73,000 a year, but you're just going to really love your life and you may not have a fucking you know, yacht, but like you're going to be happy. And I just really think that that needs to be talked about way more. How do you think that the quarantine post COVID, how, how will that manifest itself in, in our daily realities again, in terms of sporting events, you know, meeting somebody, shaking their hand, what do you think the biggest changes will be for us as a society? I think we're gonna appreciate relationships more and treat them better. I think we're gonna use technology more to stay in touch. I think you're gonna go on Zooms with your buddies from high school in a way that matters. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, yeah. I, think, I think that, um, I think there's a lot of that opportunity. Are you blurry on your end, by the way? I've been frozen for a while. Yeah, me I too. I, the audio, like, just keep going. Um, cause, yeah. cause I got, you, think it's still, you, think, you think people can still watch? My sister just texted me blurry. Like, we'll, we'll right. see. But I, I got to bounce it a few minutes anyway. So no problem. And I'd love to do this again, by the way, and, and maybe the NBA draft. Um, uh, I, I think that people are going to use technology to stay in touch more. More than anything mm -hmm. else. Yeah, do I think pe some people would be germaphobes and not engage in those activities? Yes. But, do, but what do I really think? I think, I think most of all, I think people are going to really, really, really focus on talking to their grandmother on Zoom when they used to talk to their grandma once a month on Zoom for a half an hour versus calling her, you know, once every three to seven weeks for two minutes. And I think that's that visual is going to matter. I think that's if you ask me the biggest thing, it's e-commerce buying and video conferencing are the two alpha winners from post COVID. What about, but how, how, how long until, until that wears off to the point where, you know, people are not so scared to never to shake someone's hand. Never. Yeah, cause oh, is, is shaking, there a cap shaking, to that? Yeah, shaking hands, I think you'll have a 20% decrease. For a sporting event, yeah. Yeah, listen, I mean, we're gonna get back to those as quickly as possible. You know, like, like everybody, like I'm, I'm gonna be devastated if I can't go to Jet Games this year. I know. Yeah. Like, like I'm gonna be Ooh. dead. Like I already told, I already told like, <laughs> like every Jets player and coach and, and front office person that if there's no seats, like I'm coming on the sideline and being part of the, I got to be there. I don't know what else to say. Like, I understand. I understand. Yeah. I just think it's a really important, important, important point to make given that it's like most of the time when something really drastic happens in our lives, we change. And then we sent, we team, we seem to revert back to that, that state we never, of mind of I, we, what we're look, comfortable with. You'll appreciate this. Airline travel is still different 20 years later. Mm, you know, that's interesting. I, yeah, yeah this, is, this is not a car, a cop car, you know, put on their lights behind you. You got scared. You put your both hands on the wheel and you drive, you know, the speed limit. And then an hour later you go back. This is a sustained 30, 60, 90 day behavior change. And that will get mm. into habit. Okay. Yeah, I know you got to go. Last question for me. Yes. You've talked a lot about innovation, Gary, and how important it is right now during this time when we have the time to be at home and maybe think differently, you know, approach a different side of our brains and actually enable ourselves to think creatively. So innovation wise, what is there anything that, that you're working on right now that you're really excited about that maybe you wouldn't have had the opportunity to do if it, if it weren't for COVID? 
you know, I'm really building out a scalable infrastructure around video conferencing that's gonna allow me to travel 30, 40% less. It's a huge coup. Mm. It's a huge fucking coup, you know? Um, yeah. You know? Yeah. Let me, and, well, how, let me leave you with how, this. I needed to get this off. I've not watched yeah. one minute of the last dance. Just want you to know that. Oh, I was, that, was, that's, that was actually my last thing. What are we gonna Not do a minute. Robin? All right, here's what I have to, I have to ask you if we can do this again when you yes. have seen it. Yes, uh, I, I don't know if I, it's I, don't know, I, don't, I, I heard it's great. I won't watch, great. I hate them with all my heart. I won't watch the Patriots documentary. In you told years. me, you, you, you texted me that and I thought you were joking. No, I you really won't watch it. Jordan, I don't think you understand how much I hate that Bulls team. Like, that was my prime high school years. The Knicks were really... 94, 99, yeah. Yeah, I mean, even back to, like, 92, like, 93. The, yeah, 92. the 93 series with the Knicks where... Yeah, because then they beat Phoenix. Yeah, where, yeah. where Ewing stunned them in game one, and we won game one in Chicago. I lost... I don't know if I've ever been happier still to this day. Like, I, like the Rangers and Yankees won championships for me, but winning... That was a great... Winning yeah. game... The Patriots-Jets win. The Jets winning in New England... Uh, back in the day, that was number one. But I'll tell you right now, Knicks beating the Bulls in 92, in, in, I think it was 92 actually, in game one of their series in Chicago, I remember Ewing on the corner hitting a three late. Like, it, I was so shocked. The Bulls were so in, you know, unbeatable to go and win game one. I think it was 92 because it was like Gerald Wilkins still. It yeah, was a seven that, game that series. sounds right. Yeah, it was 92. And they won, 90, it, won it in was Chicago. 92. Wow. It was 92. It was a seven-game series. They got blown out in game seven. But they were, like, that's when the Knicks arrived. They were, you know, I thought they were going to get swept. Maybe we'll steal one in New York. They won game one in Chicago. They took them to seven games. And that's when you kind of knew we had arrived. And then the next year, we really had a shot. But, uh, Char you know, Charles Smith. Charles and Smith. Then, yeah, exactly. So, okay. Well, I got to go. Question. Yes. Uh, Okay, you gotta go. Okay, it's all right. It's all right. All right, I love we, you. I gotta go. Follow, it'll be a follow-up. All, right, all right, love bro. you, bro. See ya. Bye. Take care. You too. All right, everyone. Um, I can't see anything right now. My screen is frozen. So what I'm gonna do, um, as promised and as always, is I'm gonna hop back on live right now. I'm gonna end this session and answer uh, any follow-up questions I can for a few minutes. So if you're interested. Um, jump back on with me in, in 30 seconds. If not, no worries. And as always, feel free to DM me if I can help you in any way to Gary's point. It's a big part.